Hello, this is the RPG Pundit, the final boss in Internet shitlords. And uh, first of all, a programming note. This Sunday is uh, our next episode of Inappropriate Characters. If you're not familiar yet, go check out that channel, Inappropriate Characters. It's me and uh, Venger and Job commenting about RPG news and, and topics and controversies. And I believe, knock on wood, that we will actually end up having Grim Jim this time. He was supposed to be in the last episode, but he had a medical emergency that prevented him. I think that is what's happening now, but I'm not sure. So we'll have to, we'll have to see. Um, so stay tuned and find out if we get Grim Jim back on inappropriate characters. Today, I'm doing a review of the Adventure System Core Rules. Uh, those of you who watch my my videos or who read my blog before that would know that uh, if you want me to review your product, as long as it's an RPG product in physical form, you have to send it to me and I will review it. I'll review it on video nowadays. I used to do print reviews, but now it's the age of video, so I do video reviews. Good way to get attention for your products. And I got to say, the person who sent me this game, um, Adventure System, which is written by Phil Adams, and it is published by Ideal Creations, uh, is quite brave because, I mean, surely they know, if they know about my reviewing, they know about my preferences in games. They know I'm a, an OSR guy and what have you. And they, they almost certainly know that I am not a big fan of point-buy games. I'm not a big fan of um, complex rule systems for character creation and things like that. So, but they sent it to me anyway. So that's, that's bold. I'll grant them that. Um, the book itself, this is not an OSR game. This is a point by game with some fairly uh, interesting rules. I, I, I don't want to say unusual rules, but uh, slightly, I guess you could say. So it's 216 pages long. As you can see, it's got very good print quality, good art. You know, it's it's uh, quite nicely done. There's no question about the the quality of the the, the product. Um, hardcover. I think you can get it from Drive Through RPG. Um, I don't remember how much that was selling for. I I want to say sixty six bucks, but I I'm not one hundred percent sure. Anyways, Adventure System is a kind of a universal RPG. And we've had a lot of those over the years. So this is not a new thing. The idea of, oh, this is a system of rules that you can then use for any kind of game at all, right? Whether it's uh, fantasy, high fantasy, low fantasy, horror, superheroes, modern, spy, science fiction, cyberpunk, high sci-fi, low sci-fi, etc., etc., etc. You know, GURPS is probably the most famous of that, but then there's also like Champions and Hero System and uh, the uni system, uh, and, uh, of course, and, and Savage Worlds, I think too, and, and which this game is somewhat reminiscent of, I must say. Um, so what I'm going to judge a product, I mean, I'm going to judge it by two things. One is my own inherent biases. And, you know, I'll try to make those absolutely clear to people. For example, I do not like point by games. You know, I don't like dice pools, <laughs> stuff like that. I obviously don't like storytelling games. Um, and the second is what the person claims the game is supposed to do, you know. And here, Philip Adams says that uh, the adventure system is usable for almost any kind of genre, including history, cyberpunk, and science fiction. And uh, that uh, this is a system that uh, is driven by... Here we go. It's driven by story and action, using a simple mechanic to resolve conflict. The rules should support this goal and never interfere with it. Um, character concept is free and there are no classes in the system, right? Um, so the, the key thing, as far as I see, is the idea that this is a game that can be used for any kind of setting. And the second being the claim that it is a simple, a game driven by the story and using a simple mechanic to resolve conflict and that rules should not interfere with the telling of the story. Now, storytelling is, in, <laughs> to begin with, something I disagree is the point. World creation is the point of RPGs. The, the point of an RPG isn't to tell a story. It's to make a world 
that comes to life, that actually exists, and and have the players go into that virtual environment and be a part of it, you know, with the events that happen in that virtual environment. The next thing we get here is a in-game fiction, which is always it's always hell. <laughs> so I can't blame this guy. It's just and this, all in-game fiction is unbearable. Uh, so I'm just going to skip over that one, that part completely. Here we get to the core rules. Now, everything in here is basically rules. It's, it's, this is not a setting. It's not a world. This is a set of rules that are, you're meant to be able to use for any kind of system. Um, you have a set of statistics, strength, dex, endurance, charisma, intellect, fortitude, and then some derived statistics, your athletics, quickness, spirit, and toughness. And here's the simple mechanic that, because I thought, well, simple mechanic must mean it's a simple system. That's not what this means, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> the simple mechanic is that what you have here is basically a dice scale. So your scores will be registering in dice values. So you might have a D4 strength and a D8 dexterity and a D10 endurance and a, um, a, a D6 charisma or something like that. And so if you have those, that that's whatever you have as your your die type in that ability score is what you roll for that ability score. Um, what you roll when you're taking an action. So for example, if you're doing a dexterity check and your dexterity is a D8, you'd roll a D8. If your endurance was only a D4, you'd roll a D4. And so the great supposed time saver of this is that there are no modifiers in the game. There are no stat modifiers, right? So you're rolling, you're not going to have like, you, well, you got to roll this and then you have to use a plus one bonus or something like this or a minus one penalty. Um, you roll the value that you have in the, in the ability score or the skill score or the derived statistic where you have to pick the, the nearest die type, um, from from the, the average of the two rounded down, um, which is a bit awkward, but whatever. Um, and uh, anyway, um, a D, so if you have a D6 and a D8, it'll always be a D6, right? The derived statistic will be a D6. Anyway, um, the, the checks are done with opposed checks, with difficulty numbers. You have to roll that number or better. Um, and uh, like, very similar, this is in many ways is very similar to the old Aces and Eights RPG from the 90s, including the fact that if you roll the maximum value on the die, then that is a, has an explosive quality. Um, so that means you roll again and add it to, to it. Now, I believe that one of the problems that the original Aces and Eights had that people that are slightly better at math than I am pointed out is that if you have an ability score that's a D4 and another one that's a D6, the odds of maxing out and then actually ending up with an average score that is higher than the average score in a D6 for get from getting you know when you where you can get a six and max out, but the other one you get a in in the D four you'll max twenty five percent of the time, right? In the D six, it's like what seventeen percent of the time or something like that, right? It's less, and that difference means that it's technically better to have a D four in a stat than a D six. So <laughs> tough, okay, but uh, uh, you know I guess it doesn't matter. I don't know. I mean the thing is to the people that like these kinds of games. It probably really would matter, wouldn't it? Advantage and disadvantage. So the, 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 there are no bonuses or penalties, um, you know. But they, they make this. The, the author makes this sound like this is a super innovative, world changing incident, when it really isn't. You know, like D twenty today. I mean, the 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 D D and D fifth edition has advantage and disadvantage, and and you know. That's one of the things I really pushed when when fifth edition came out. I said, don't use any stat, any bonuses or penalty rules. It's all based on advantage and disadvantage. That's the killer app. So this is, you know, when did this come out? Did this come out before? No, it came out in 2020. So there's really no, yeah, I mean, obviously, because they say advantage and disadvantage. Right? It's like, um, so that there's, there's this is not really as novel as the creator of the system wants you to think. And it doesn't solve complexity right it, it it doesn't actually do it, it solves one tiny piece of complexity but when you have 
six derived stats and then four secondary stats. And then on top of that, you're going to have um, destiny points, which are like, I guess, your experience points, which you'll allocate in a point by system to create characters. Now, I mean, they do provide you with some example character ar archetypes here, the combat mage, cyborg, gunslinger. I mean, like it, you can make anything, right? But look at these stats, right? Like look at the um, necromancer, right? You got all these statistics, all these derived statistics, movement, wounds, encumbrance, fate, destiny, which are two different things, apparently. Then you have to buy talents. You have to buy magical powers. You have to buy skills, right? Um, all of those things being done in this, this, um, in this, in this setup, it means that this is not a simple game. This isn't, and this is definitely isn't a game where the rules will just fade into the background of the story, right? If you want that, I mean, play, Play Amber, play Lords of Olympus, you know, play a game that's 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 diceless and largely narrative and where the stats are handled almost entirely by the DM and players don't even have to think about it. Right? If that's the effect you want, that's what you have to do. Right? You have to have a, a, a much simpler system, something with like at most four stats and ideally one where players never have to look at their character sheet here in this game. Players routinely will have to look at their character sheet. So it's not a simple game. Um, is it good apart from that? Well, we've got uh, a very good effort being made to be able to show off the universality of the system. I don't think that it's wrong to say that this is a, a system that can be used with some effectiveness for universality purposes, right? Um, so you have different mythical races available, futuristic characters, all of which are outlined like how would you make them, right? If you're creating the character, right? If you want to make custom races, you work out details there. Um, there's also kind of pseudo stats of honor and morality and sanity, um, There's which are done on a kind of a compass check, which also, if the point is storytelling, why do you have these things that affect like um, non-physical storytelling elements, right? Like, it, it seems to me like this is, um, this is off, right? Um, but okay. Uh, mental disorders, um, skills and talents. You know, here you've got all the rules for making skills, purchasing skills, um, you basically have to spend points of uh, destiny points in order to get, um, different skill levels. There's a big list of skills, which is not nearly as large as I might've expected. So, um, that's something at least because obviously the more skills you have, the more complicated it is too, right? Um, of course, these are just the standard skills because then there will be other skills that will come in depending on your class, uh, depending on your setting, right? Um, monster talent list which is a master talent list rather which is full of different um types of talents that you could have depending on the type of campaign you're running and the type of characters you have so you know if there if it makes sense that defensive driving would be something characters could have in your setting if they're like cars and stuff then you i guess it's up to the gm also to decide what is and is not allowed in the type of setting he's creating um this is the reason why I've never been a big fan of kind of generic universal games, because first of all, it, it's always really a lot of paperwork, a lot of effort, and the DM has to do a lot of policing. Um, and if it's point by on top of that, then there's going to be lots of efforts to min max, though I'll admit that in this game, it is less easy to min max than in some other games, right? There's the, There are some measures that have been taken that um, make it a little less um, problematic. I mean, you know, you can min-max in any game, that any game has variables, but, uh, uh, but, but this one is not as bad as some other games like Shadowrun. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Shadowrun. Uh, the combat rules are presented in a way that is, that is pretty um, basic and, and effective. You know, and you roll, a, you roll a DN equal to the defense value of the opponent. Um, with, uh, and then if you succeed, you do a damage check. The damage check is done against toughness. So again, you're getting a lot of... You have to do a lot of separate rolls 
in order to, especially because the defender can try to actively defend, right? Um, this is, again, not a simple system. It's not, a, you know, like the, the amount of rules you have to do to resolve one round of action in this game is a lot more than it is in D&D. You want, oh, sorry, guys. You want a simple system that will let you resolve combat relatively easily and so that it doesn't get in the way of the storytelling. D&D is that, <laughs> like basic D&D. So, uh, you know, Lion and Dragon does that. Um, this gives you, you know, uh, some, uh, on the contrary, like what he should have said is that this game has mechanics that will guide events in a way that is more, uh, more sophisticated than Dungeons and Dragons. Cause the combat in Dungeons and Dragons is I roll, you either hit or you miss, and then you roll the damage, which goes to the hit points, right? And that's a standard D and D. In some versions, some variants, I mean, Lion and Dragon, you might do a blocking maneuver, or you might have a critical, right? Slight, uh, slightly more complexity, right? But uh, if the point was simple, that's what, that's what the mechanic would be. If the point is the rules can be more complex than that and therefore lend to a more of an atmosphere of what is happening during the combat, which I think was the actual kind of goal... Uh, of the of the creator of this book that's what he should have said you know is that the all the stuff in here rather than saying oh it makes it simple and you can just do storytelling what this actually does this the the all the things that he's put into this book is um make an effort to enrich through that the mechanics themselves enrich the imagination of the players as they're playing right which doesn't always work but when it works it works good you know uh, wealth is done by a generic wealth stat, so one more thing to, to do, although at least they don't have to, like, plus or minus every little gold piece. Um, lots of different types of armors, weapons, etc., items, things that, um, you know, like, so a lot of effort has been put in here thinking about a lot of different genres, how you can apply them, um, you know, again, this, not simple. Right. You wanted a simple system that wouldn't get in the way of storytelling. Just say, you know, uh, any kind of pistol does a D6, any kind of heavy pistol, a D8, any kind of rifle, a D10, period. Everything else it should not should not be there if what you wanted was simple. You know, <laughs> like uh, the combat rules in Lion and Dragon and in, in Star Adventure the the weapons are simple because they only have you know i don't even have separate you know it's not like an entry for short sword and then another one for hand axe you know all medium or or all small weapons do a d6 damage right and then you could choose to say well this particular type of weapon has some special quality to it and that's it um that would have been much simpler than making a list of you know a ton of weapons and then here we've got cybernetic stuff Cyber surgery rules, you know. So they, they, again, very, very complete. Lots of details, interesting stuff. You got powers, you know. It's very clear that the core of the book, because I'm, I'm, I'm recognizing that I've been going for a while now. Here's magic, right? The core of the book provides all kinds of info the, for what you could use if you were playing low fantasy, high fantasy. If you were playing a modern game. Um, and if you were playing a kind of cyberpunk game and a sci-fi game, right? And then you're going to get, you'll see, so these are all, you know, magic power, large, large magic section, but including other, you know, specific types. So you got magic, you got psychic powers, you've got divine powers where you're, you know, um, relying, you know, like cleric stuff. Um, then you have travel stuff here for... Um, life of the future, right? Like high tech stuff, super high tech stuff, starships. Um, you, you've got to admire the amount of effort that has been put into it. And I think, uh, you know, clearly the, the game itself is probably pretty playable, just not playable for the things that he's advertising. And it's not an, a really um, for the reasons he's advertising, rather. And it's not really anything super novel, right? Like I think. If you're already playing GURPS, you know, you're, you've got a generic universal system, right? You don't need this. If you're already playing, you know, Hero, same thing, or Unisystem or whatever, right? Um, now, if, if, 
if you're not, then you might want to look into this. And um, specifically, if you liked, if you like stuff like Savage Worlds or um, or Aces and Eights. No, sorry, not Aces and Eights. Uh, Deadlands. I meant to say Deadlands, not Aces and Eights. Right in Deadlands, <laughs> where you roll the dice types based on the uh, the attributes. Um, if you if you like those, then you're you're probably going to to like this system. Like the you know, it seems to me very reminiscent of Deadlands. I'm wondering if I said aces and eights right from the beginning or just now. <laughs> this is the problem with getting to my age and my lack of memory. <laughs> I'm having a Biden moment here. Uh, the referee's guide rule zero is uh, it's not a toxic rule zero, but it's also not a productive one. <laughs> um, the referee, uh, very, very basic advice to the to the um, to the would be DM. Um, probably advice that anyone who is actually into RPGs enough to find this, like the odds of so this being someone's first RPG, seems pretty slim to me. Um, fate and destiny management, dice management, counting turns, managing checks, like nothing like. Uh, points out well you have to decide what your um what your setting is going to be uh then we have a big section on opponents uh monsters and and so on um again with a variety from genre and a good variety for the obviously limited space that is allowed i mean there's no you're not going to get the entire D D monster manual and the entire call of cthulhu monster manual and the entire you know um, cyberpunk monster manual in here or whatever. So, uh, but it is uh, a good selection and very good art throughout, you know, nice layout. Um, space pirates, thieves and brigands, trollkin, so on and so forth. So lots, lots and lots of monster stuff here. And the, the last thing I want to get to is right at the end, I believe. Um, yeah, here we go. So you get, um, at the very back in the appendix, you get a couple of other examples of play, which were particularly things that are not a co totally covered in the main rules, which I thought was clever. So, you know, like I had mentioned the, the things that the main rules cover. So here's an example of an adaptation if you want to do a Wild West campaign, right? So how do you use the characters? How do you change the skills and talents? How do you uh, what particular, you know, if there's special stuff that you can do, like um, fanning the gun with uh, when in a shootout, right? A modified rule, uh, whether or not you want to use magic, mentalism, or super science, or anything like that. Costs, duels. Um, so there's some rules about duels there. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, weapons and firearms specific for the old West. And there's another one here for superheroes, right? Um, this is probably a little bit weaker because it basically just says for superpowers, just do them like any of the other powers and just go with it. And that's not really, that doesn't capture super genre, but again, supers is the hardest genre to effectively capture. Um, and then World War II, again, if you want to do a World War II campaign, um, if there's, they're hoping to do some competition for Oper Operation White Box, I guess. But anyway, so that is... The Adventure System. Um, I I don't think it's a bad book. I don't think it's a bad set of rules. Um, I do think it's not exactly been presented as what it actually does, and and maybe the author needs to think about that a bit. Um, and I do think that it it isn't. It's presented as if there was something really original about it, and there really isn't something really original about it like there's nothing in it that is not that that makes you think, oh my god this is you know this is totally different than, than anything else no everything in it has been done before now um you could argue it's it's being done well here and that this is a, a good universal system that can be useful to to make adventuring if you don't like osr games you know <laughs> i can because i guess you know like to me, it's still, it certainly doesn't beat OSR gaming, but that's a, that at that point is a personal bias. Um, the, the game is on drive through and it's, from what I saw, I think it's an Electrum bestseller. So you, you don't, you know, you can't, 
just uh, turn your nose at that. That's a that's a significant number of sales. It's doing well. Um, so I, I think that it's, uh, you know, the product itself is good. And if this is exactly the sort of thing you're looking for, and if you do like that sort of style of, you know, Deadlands or, um, uh, or, or Savage Worlds, um, you might very much find yourself liking this kind of game, you know, and using this, this, these game rules for your universal adventuring. <laughs> um, I'm much more of a believer in, to, in, in 2021 that what you really need to do is take a, uni- a, a, a skeletal, very light universal set of rules, like the rules for D&D, and then apply those in specific alterations and iterations to specific, specific genres. So, you know, what I've done, I don't have a universal rule system. I've got a very specific medieval authentic alteration of D&D to make Lion and Dragon, a very specific alteration of D&D into, you know, space opera to make Star Adventure, a specific iteration of D&D to make into um, modern occult role-playing in the uh, Invisible College, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but some people do like the opportunity. And I mean, like you got these, a rule like this, you can choose, you can pick and choose to craft your own setting, especially if you're making a setting that is weirder than the average, right? If you're mixing and matching a lot of stuff, this could be a good resource. So that, that's my point of view about it. Um, the good is that the, the production is good and the, the rules, there's nothing wrong with the rules that I can see, nothing seriously wrong. Uh, there's stuff that will depend on whether, you know, you, you like or not the level of complexity that it presents um, and things like point by. Um, and, uh, you know, the bad is really just that it, it I don't think it, it lives up to its own type of hype and it should have had a totally different type of hype that would have been more accurate. <laughs> so I guess that's it for today. If you like this video, please share it uh, anywhere you think people will appreciate it. And um, if you're interested in the adventure system, I'll be putting the link in the description below, probably, if I can remember to find it. And I will um, also obviously have links to all of my own books. So if you decide that adventure system's not for you, but you want to support me, uh, you can check out all my games, Invisible College, Lion and Dragons, Star Adventure, uh, World of the Last Sun, and uh, all of my source books like uh, the entire RPG Pundit Presents PDF series. Uh, you're bound to find something there you'll like. And, and I mean, you can just toss, you can join Patreon. I don't do anything in my Patreon. So it's for people who've either bought all my books or have no further interest in buying books of mine, but still want to give me money. And if you if you want to do that, that's great. I super appreciate it. We've had a couple of new Patreon people come in. I think since the live stream where I pointed out that there was some loser SJW type that was, uh, that was uh, bragging that they had more Patreon followers than me. I think a couple of people joined just to spite that person, you know, <laughs> because otherwise I give no, you know, no, no real benefit to being in the Patreon, but I do appreciate people who will do it just to support me. And that's great. But of course, if you do like my books and my products or, or you don't know if you like them or not, I urge you to check that out before you do you know, send me stuff on Patreon. Because that way you're buying something that you're going to really enjoy and you're, you know, also giving money to me, um, which I very much appreciate. So uh, I guess that's everything for today. Currently smoking Lorenzetti egg plus Argento natural. <laughs>